But there's one thing I know for sure. Happy adults, more specifically ADHD adults, all have this common thread of choosing to do something with their life that lights them up, that fuels their interest, that keeps them waking up every morning and doing the damn thing, no matter how hard it is, no matter how badly they suck at it at first, they do the thing. And that is what I want to cover in today's video. So if you are struggling to find your purpose, your calling, that thing that you were meant to do, the thing you were supposed to do when you grow up, you still haven't figured out even though you're 73, that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. So stick around. Let's get to this. When it comes to determining what it is that you want to do for the rest of your life, whether, again, you're 22 or 72, I think that there are three main things that you need to consider. Number one, it needs to be something that you love to do. Now, this is especially important as an adhd -er because we don't always have control of where our attention goes. It goes to whatever we think is most interesting. So let's not fight that. Let's find the thing that we're interested in doing and keep doing more and more of that. So like I said, something that you love to do, and it also has to be something that you enjoy the process of doing. Many of my clients come to me and they say, I want to be an entrepreneur. And when I ask them, why do you want to be an entrepreneur? They tell me it's because they want time freedom and they want to work from home and they want to work their own hours. But that is not why you should become an entrepreneur. That is why you should find a remote job. Being an entrepreneur is about wanting to serve a specific audience and solve problems for that audience. Kind of like what I'm doing here. And if this is the first time you're landing on my channel, welcome, my name is Karen McGill. I am an ADHD coach and creator, and I'm here for the busy, ambitious brains who want to get schnizzled on, but they don't know what it is they're supposed to do with their life. So let's keep going. We've already talked about, it should be something that you love doing and that you enjoy doing the process of and not getting married to some magical thinking outcome that you think it should be. Number two, it should be something that you love doing enough that you're willing to do it badly, that you're willing to be imperfect and do it poorly and just keep going and going and going so that eventually you get good at the thing. I will tell you, I have been putting YouTube videos up here for a year and a half now. They're still not that great, but they're a lot better than they were at the beginning. And I don't care because the context of what I'm saying and the message that I'm trying to deliver to me is more important than the fact that I'm doing this imperfectly and I will continue to do it imperfectly. I'm a okay with that. I'm enjoying the process. I love making these videos. I love hearing from you guys. I love talking into the camera. Love all the things about doing this for my ADHD people. So what is it that you love doing enough that you're willing to do it badly? And here's a great question to ask yourself. I heard this today on a podcast. The question that we often hear is, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? And that's kind of a stupid question because we could do anything if we knew we weren't going to fail. The better question is, what would you do even if you knew you would fail because failure is inevitable, but you would keep going at it because you love it that much? That is the level of love that we're going for in this pursuit. Nothing less. So number one, Find what you're willing to do and that you're committed to the process, not just the outcome. Number two, it's got to be something that you're willing to suck at at first because you will. We all will. That is the human condition. Nobody comes out of the womb being an expert at YouTube videos or podcasting or whatever it is you choose to do. And number three, you have to have a level of self-trust and self-belief that you will figure it out and that if this isn't the right thing, it might lead you to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Now, why am I saying that? This is specifically for my ADHDers because very often clients will come to me because they want to pursue a goal. They want to do something, but they've done a million things like it in the past and started and stopped or started and failed or didn't turn out the way they wanted to or that wasn't what they thought it was going to be and they stopped doing it. And every time they did that, they started building this bigger and bigger narrative of this person who never follows through on anything. And that is absolutely not true. People are 50-50. Sometimes we don't follow through on things. Sometimes we do. But the problem is that very rarely do we pause and pay attention to the things that we do follow through on. Like yesterday when you attempted to put your pants on and you did. That's a follow through. Or last week when you told your friend you were going to do something for them and you did it. Or when you said you were going to show up for work on Monday and you did, you followed through. We follow through every day. You would be living in a ditch, not watching YouTube if you had zero ability to follow through on anything. So 
What I would love for you to do is start poking away at that narrative if that's your problem, because we all cycle through things. We all try things and we discover whether or not they are something that we want to continue doing or not. And sometimes people with ADHD, because we have such fast, busy brains, we cycle through things a lot faster than the average bear. But think about what would happen if we didn't stop doing things at some point, if we didn't follow through. You'd still be playing with GI Joes and Barbies. We have to experience things in our life take a moment to decide whether or not they're for us or not for us, and then choose accordingly. There's no reason why there has to be shape involved in it. There's no reason why that has to limit your self-belief that you can actually follow through on the things that are important to you and that you enjoy and that you love and that you love doing, because those are the things that you will follow through on. So I want you to take that idea that you never follow through on anything and ditch it to the curb because we are on a journey to discover what it is we love and double down on that and see where it takes us. And sometimes it takes us in one direction. Sometimes it takes us in another. But as long as we are listening to ourselves, do I like doing this or do I not like doing this? Does this light me up or does it not light me up? Does it give me energy or does it drain my energy? Those are the questions that we should be asking ourselves on the regular as we go through this journey. So let's say you have no idea what it is you want to do. Like, that's great, Karen. Sounds awesome. I have no idea what that is. Well, a couple of things are probably true about that. You're either not thinking deeply about your strengths, your values, the things that light you up, and I have solutions for that. Or number two, you know what you love, but you're embarrassed to admit it to yourself or to other people, and that's what's holding you back. Or number three, you're like 22 years old and you haven't tried enough stuff. And if that's the case, then I would encourage you to look at your academic pursuits and extracurricular activities and start looking through those experiences to see what truly felt natural and aligned to you. But if you're not thinking deeply enough or you're embarrassed about the thing that you want to do, then let me tell you this. If you don't give yourself permission to explore and get clear and give yourself permission to follow through on what it is that you love in a way that lights you up, then you are always going to struggle in the area of work. You are going to bounce from job to job because you know there's this thing over here that you adore, but you're not doing it for whatever reason. So you're over here on the career struggle bus for the rest of your life. I was on that career struggle bus and I didn't get off it until two years ago and I just turned 53. So if I sound passionate about this, I am because I don't want you to waste as much time in your life as I did in mine. Now, one thing I learned a couple of years ago when I started this ADHD journey was understanding my needs and my values and what was truly important to me. And it turns up, no surprise, that meaningful work was up there. So meaningful work for me means it's something that I'm engaged in, that I'm interested in, and it's something where my interest is strong enough that it propels me forward rather than me having to drag myself. Because we all know dragging ourselves doesn't last very long. So when I realized that, how important this truly was to me, I was willing to put in the work to get clear on what meaningful work meant for me. And I was also willing to do it badly. And I was also willing to do it for a long time without any guarantee of big payouts or having lots of money. Now, I spent the majority of my career in corporate. I didn't love the work that I did, but I was pretty good at it. And because I worked in tech, I made a decent salary. So several years ago, back in 2017, I got super motivated to achieve this thing called financial independence so that I could retire early. And that became my fundamental goal. I wanted to retire so that I could just spend my days doing whatever I wanted. And eventually I got to that point. I saved up enough money so that I could cover my living expenses, assuming that I would just want to retire. And guess what? I work more now than I ever have before. But I work by choice. I do the thing that I want to do. And I could have done this years ago had I taken the time to really explore all of the things that lit me up in a structured way that made sense and also give myself the permission to do the things I want to do, let go of limiting beliefs, and invest in my own sense of self-trust. So for me, it took a lifetime of collecting little bits and pieces of what I knew I enjoyed. I know I'm a good communicator and I did it in corporate for a long time, but I didn't want to do that in the corporate context anymore. So now I use that communication skill when I'm on YouTube or when I'm on my podcast or when I'm talking to clients. I know that I love being creative. I love writing. I love doing these videos. I love recording my podcast. So again, 
that fed my need to create and express myself in a creative way. Because what I didn't realize is that I love ideas. I love taking ideas that are out in the universe or out in research and spinning them in a way that resonates with people and putting a positive spin on it. So that leads us to the third piece of this whole puzzle, which is the self-trust and the permission that you need to give yourself. Nobody else can give it to you to actually pursue the things that light you up. And I know some of you are sitting there going, must be nice, Karen. I'd like to have financial independence too. When I talk about financial independence, it doesn't mean that I'm driving around in Ferraris or anything like that. It means that I got super clear on what was most important to me and optimized for those things and got like strategically frugal in every other area of my life and saved up enough money that now I have my basic needs met and I can focus my time and attention on other things. Now, I'm not saying that that is achievable for everybody because I know there's also a lot of privilege in that as well. But we can all move in that direction. We can make a choice today to start moving in the direction of what lights us up, to do the things that we're profoundly interested in, and to save money in pursuit of that. And that is what I want for you. I want you to give yourself permission to actually do those things. Trust me, when you get to the point in your life when you're in your 50s and most of your working career has already happened, you are going to look back and number one, you're going to be grateful for any money that you saved. But number two, you're going to think of all of the time that you spent doing work that made you feel miserable, and you're going to regret the fact that you did not do this sooner. So no matter where you are now in your life, whether you're 22 or 72, today is the day, the first day where you can actually start optimizing for the things that light you up. Now, in terms of finding the things that light you up, if you're still struggling, think back to the things that you loved doing as a kid. I loved playing with my tape recorder, interviewing myself doing interviews. And that to me was just the best way to spend a day. So it's no wonder that I've become the communicator that I am today. And I've also always been really enthralled in the human development space. I have two psychology degrees. I'm a certified life coach and I love to nerd out on neuroscience and what makes people tick. I never gave myself permission in the past to pursue life coaching because it always felt a little weird to me. It wasn't until I hit my 50s and got my ADHD diagnosis that it kind of clicked. So what I'm telling you here is start with the things that you were intrinsically motivated to do as a kid because a lot of those things are indication of how your soul wants to express itself creatively. So don't underestimate that. Then start connecting the dots of the things that have stuck with you over the course of your life, the things that have always interested you. Look at the podcast you listen to, the books that you read, or just the things that you enjoy talking about. It may take time to figure out how they all fit together to make a career that's perfect for you. And you may never find perfection. I wouldn't call my career perfect, but it's something I love doing. And when you have that, when you have the ability to wake up every day and do something that engages you and that is a true expression of who you are, it gives your life a sense of quality and a deeper sense of purpose that you are adding to the world in a way that aligns with who you are and benefits the people or spaces around you. So I hope that gave you some food for thought. Just to recap what I've covered here. Number one, Finding what you love starts with getting curious about the things that you always love, the things that light you up and give you energy. Also, it has to be something where you enjoy the process as much or more than the outcome itself. Number two, it has to be something that you're willing to do imperfectly and show up over and over again, whether or not you're ever going to get a big payout because you love doing it that much. And number three, you've got to give yourself the self-trust and permission to explore and to know that some things are going to be for you and not for you. And that is okay. Just keep pushing forward. So that's why I'm so passionate about this. It's why I do these videos. It's also why I have the programs that I have below that might help you figure out who you are, what you value, and how you can use that in your life. I highly recommend Vision of Action, which is a few different assessments that will help you get clear on who you are and what matters to you. But never lose that pursuit. And above all, give yourself permission to do the things that light you up and trust yourself. Trust your inner knowing that you're going in the right direction and you will. On that note, guys, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.